All right, guys, you've been researching about real estate and now you're ready to get started, right? Now, this can be something that's daunting for anybody who's just starting anything, right? But let alone an investment strategy that could potentially cost tens of thousands of dollars to even get started. So during this video, we're gonna talk about real estate investment strategies 101, just the basics, right? How to get started as a beginner. And when we start thinking about this as a beginner getting in real estate, why is it that somebody would want to get into real estate, right? What are some of the benefits? Well, the benefits are simply this. They say that 90% of millionaires are made through real estate. Now, a lot of people kind of get that twisted. They think millionaire, then they think, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm like Scrooge McDuck. I've got billions and millions in the bank and I can just buy whatever I want. And that's not quite the case, right? So pump your brakes there. Really, when we're talking about making millionaires, it's because of the power that real estate has. Right, real estate can not only provide a little bit of cash flow, which is great. Now we have more money to spend on some of those things, but it also helps you grow your wealth, right? Grow your net worth. And it does that in a couple of different ways. The first way is through appreciation. Now, what appreciation means is, hey, we bought it today for $100,000. We brought that whole property for $100,000. And five years later, now it's worth $150,000. Why? Because the, the market has gone up. The demand has gone up. The cost for materials and for housing has gone up. So if we think about it, that. I mean, hell, just appreciation alone can seem like a good thing, but we have to compare it to something to realize how good it actually is. So I want you to imagine you putting your money into a bank account. Your money goes into the bank account and how much interest do you get? Yeah, that's right. You probably get 0.01%. It's something really bad. Not even a full percent on your money. Not one single percent. You get a fraction of a percent. Now that's harmful. Why? Well, when we look at inflation, right? What actually happens to the dollar? The inflation rate on average is about 3%. So if the inflation is 3%, what that means is our dollar is losing purchasing power, right? It's losing value. And if it's losing value at 3%, that means technically our dollar is now worth 97 cents. It lost 3% next year. But if our bank is not even giving us 1%, well, then we're losing money every single year. We'll see with appreciation on average, appreciation is roughly about 4% across the states. So now we're looking at, all right, well, even if inflation takes place and we lose 3%, we're gaining 4%, hey oh, now all of a sudden real estate becomes a better savings account than the bank. Now it's important to note that appreciation, technically that's like on paper, right? We won't really see that appreciation like as far as like value, like tangible piece of it until we sell the property many years down the line, right? We bought it for 100,000. Well, when we sell it for 150,000, then we actually get to touch that 50,000. But in the meantime, what's happening, what's growing over time, that 100 to 150, that's also called equity. And that equity applies to our net worth. Right, so if all of a sudden we built $100,000 for every single property that we have in equity, well then we need 10 properties and we're a millionaire. Now this is actually impacted in two different ways, right? So we talked about the cash flow that we can spend. We talked about the appreciation, right? Just the, the value of the house going up over time. Well, we also have something called depreciation. And that's basically saying, hey, look, every single year, the house is losing value of so much money every year, right? What happens then is we get to take that small amount that it's losing and we get to apply that to our income tax, right? If it's rental real estate, we can apply it to our income tax. So now let's say we made $50,000 that year in taxable income, right? We're about to get taxed on 50 grand. Well, let's say that our house depreciated by $3,000. We now get to apply that to the $50,000 that we're about to get taxed on. And now we're only taxed on $47,000. Now that may not sound like a lot to you, but now you can imagine, well, hey, if I had 10 properties at 3,000 each, that's $30,000 now that I get to take off taxable income. And on top of this, guys, depreciation, again, that's the, something that's on paper. You still have that $50,000 in your pocket, but $3,000 of it now is non-taxable. That means the government can't really touch it and put their hands in it. So now you can go use it for whatever you want or for buying more real estate. And here's the real kicker to it all, right? If this is an investment real estate for you. And let's just call it a rental or hell, let's even call it a flip. Oftentimes you can get other people's money to help you with the flip. Or if you got a renter, you can have them pay you rent. And if that rent is enough, it's also going to pay your mortgage for you. And every time you make a mortgage payment, whatever you owe on that house drops down little by little. Right? And so let's say you bought it for a hundred thousand and let's say the mortgage is a hundred thousand just for the sake of the conversation. Well, after 10 years from now, do you think the mortgage is still a hundred thousand? 
No, that's probably 70,000, right? Hypothetically. So now your mortgage is 70,000, but also 10 years from now, your property has appreciated. And let's say it got all the way up to 200,000. Well, now you don't only have 200,000 in equity, you have the 200,000 plus the 30,000 in the principal pay down, right? For your mortgage dropping. So you now have $130,000 in equity and that's small example. So we can see how, again, 10 doors can drastically change your entire financial picture. Now that you understand the benefits, let's talk about the steps to getting started. Now, the first thing that we all have to do is we have to educate ourselves, right? You guys know I love Warren Buffett. I always use his quotes, right? Essentially what he says, you have to know what you're investing in. If you don't know what you're investing in, then it's very speculative. It's basically gambling, which is why he's not in cryptocurrency as of yet, because he just doesn't understand it. So the first thing you're gonna do is do your research. Now there's a ton of places you can go. Obviously, if you guys are here on this channel, go ahead and subscribe, keep watching videos like this. We're gonna cover a broad range of topics when it comes to real estate investing and treating your real estate like a real business. But what I used when I got started was BiggerPockets, biggerpockets.com. It was a great resource, right? Tons of knowledgeable people in there. Now, at this point, right? In our lifetime, real estate information is abundant. It's everywhere. You know, I've been in it for uh, over almost a full decade now. And the knowledge that was uh, available then seems as if it was extremely scarce. Like now you can basically just throw a rock and hit any type of information you want, whether it's Google, YouTube, library, podcast, whatever the case is. And I'm sure it was available back then, but it just seems like it's a lot more available now. So you have at your disposal, all the information information you need to really get started. But the key is doing the research to really understand what investing looks like. How much money do you really need? Which types of strategies produce what type of results? Who do you need on your team in order to get this all the way through the finish line to where it's actually treated like an investment and you're not sweating day in and day out trying to figure out how to get to the next you know, obstacle or, or landmark. And as you're doing your research, oftentimes I find it personally more productive and, and easier to kind of really get going when you find the right community, right? Finding the right community allows you to openly ask these questions without feeling embarrassed or ashamed of not knowing something that may seem like common sense, right? And this community not only is gonna educate you and inform you, they're gonna be able to present you with opportunities. They're gonna be, gonna be able to present you with, hey, hey, you need experience? Well, this guy, he's on his 12th deal or his 20th deal, and he just needs help. So maybe you guys can kind of combine forces. And a lot of times you'll hear people say, oh, go out and find somebody to help or tell them you'll work for free. Look guys, all of that's fine and dandy, but when you're in the right community, those opportunities start to present themselves when you make it known that that's what you're looking for. I recommend you find the right community. And again, we talked about bigger pockets. If you guys are looking for an investment community, uh, my company, the Five Pillars team over at eXp, we do have an investor mastermind where we help individuals really understand the power of investing. And we actually walk them through their individual investments and, and strategy and so forth. So if that's something that you're interested in, just uh, go ahead and add in the comments below and or mastermind and then we'll reach out to you set up a call whatever we'll give you some more information there now once you have your community and you've done your research when we talk about the next steps there are some other sequential steps that need to take place for example maybe you need to find a realtor if you're going on market whatever the case is but ultimately it's once you understand what you're looking for you then evaluate all the deals that come across your lap find the ones that work for you put in the offer negotiate the offer, close it or get it under contract, get it all the way to close and then execute your strategy. That's the simplistic form of the step-by-step -step process. But before we really get to that aspect, identifying your strategy is the next thing that is really important. There are a ton of ways to invest in real estate. Guys, if we really think about it, real estate is the oldest asset ever known to man. It's just land, right? When we think back to the ancient kings or, or, or uh, the cavemen, the tribal eras, they had regions of land that was theirs. The more land that they could amass, the wealthier they were, the more powerful they were. If you can imagine a way that you wanna receive land, right? Let's talk like terms, right? Like, hey, look, I wanna put a dollar down today. I wanna to pay a dollar a month and I wanna do that for 50 years, but I wanna have an option to pay you all of it here in three years, right? Whatever you can imagine, it probably has been done before. And there's a strategy around it and it's called something. It's not, you know, a lot of people tend to think that, oh, they created a new strategy. I'm gonna call bullshit, right? I don't think you created a new strategy. 
It's been around for ages. It has been done. We just don't know about, right? And so we need to understand that once we know what we want this real estate to do for us, we have to identify the right strategy because that's our filter to say, yes, I'm going to take on this deal or no, I'm going to pass it up. Because if we took on every deal, we're going to learn very painfully, very quickly, that can cost us a lot of money. And I'm here to tell you that that is a factual statement. I've lost a lot of money thinking that I can take on every deal. So now when you're thinking about how do I identify the right strategy? Well, really it all aligns with what your personal goals are. So if your personal goal is, look, man, I, I want to quit my job in the next five years and be able to travel the world and do whatever the hell I want with who the hell I want, when I want. The typical kind of financial freedom model, well, typically what we need is some sort of cash flow to come in, right, to support our lifestyle. Well, if that's the case, then we need passive investment strategies. This can be rental properties. Yeah, I can own rental properties. When we think about rental properties, well, now it can be single family, multifamily, Airbnb, hotels, office space, storage units, right? Now we see that just because I said rental properties, well, hell, there's 13 other different strategies within that. In addition to rental properties, maybe we don't even own it. Maybe we're a limited investor, meaning that we just give cash to somebody who knows what they're doing. And all of a sudden we become a part of a syndication and we receive mailbox money every month or every quarter. Or maybe we need money for a kid's college fund and we're just maybe 20,000 short or maybe 30,000 short. So in our mind, we're like, okay, you know what? Let's just do a couple of flips or wholesale assignments so we get that money stacked up and then we can put it away for our children. If we look at both of those strategies, those are two completely different strategies. Or more importantly, maybe I should word it as two different goals. And our strategy has to align with our personal goal. If it doesn't, I'm gonna share with you a story of a client of mine. You know, they were crushing it just last year. They brought me on earlier this year and they had all of these grand ideas about things that they wanted to do within their business. Well, once we actually cleaned up their books and we saw how they actually performed, they actually lost quite a bit of money last year, right? And they were doing flips like crazy. They were doing a whole bunch of them. They're like, how can we lose money? Well, when we looked at it, what really happened, the, the root cause of it all, originally why they started investing in real estate was to create that passive income lifestyle so they can retire and be done with these things. What ended up happening was they started seeing the results of a flip and they make 20,000, 30,000, $40,000. They would take that 20, 30, 40 and split it up and put 20,000 into marketing, 20,000 into hiring an assistant, and then just keep going to do more and more flips. They lost track of how much money was actually going out in these places. And they kept looking at the paycheck that they got at the end of every flip. Oh man, I made 30,000. I made 20,000. I must be rolling in the dough. But instead of actually siphoning off the majority of that money and putting it into a rental property, they kept putting it back into marketing. And they were just doing this never ending cycle that they could never fulfill because they lost track of their goal. So understanding your goal, first and foremost, is the most crucial part of it all. Now, after you have your goal, now, after you've done all your research and you found your community and you know your goal, now you can identify the right strategy. And now, as we mentioned from there, now you just need to search for the deal, negotiate the deal, put the deal under contract, close the deal, and then perform. It's that simple. And like I say, guys, if you're interested in the mastermind, just drop it in the comments below. We'll reach out to you. We'll give you some more information and we'll provide you information with more masterminds that you can consider if you're really just getting started. But as always, thank you guys so much. I appreciate you and I'll see you in the next video.